We'll go ahead and get started. Tell me when it's rolling. <laughs> okay, well, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. Thanks for checking in early so that we can um, make sure everybody's connected. We're about 90, 95%. We have one member that we need to iron some out some issues with. Um, so we'll have to work on that. And I suppose there's a chance he may join us um, before the night's over. We'll see what happens. So anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, I will be uh, kind of running things here until we get to the uh, very fun part of selecting a chair and a vice chair. So we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. And Angie, would you please do the roll call? Yes, I will. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Tony Bell is currently absent at the moment. Uh, Ruth Ann Rusnak. Here. Patty Screen. Here. <laughs> Jason Wirtz. Jason. <laughs> I'm here. I was on mute. Sorry. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Tiffany Yant. Here. Mike Smith. Here. And Chris West. Here. All right. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Is everybody able to see videos? <clears throat> well, I guess we'll find out. Okay. Well, if you're seeing pictures of some people, then that I think it's working all right. So what we'll do is um, I'll kind of guide this so that there's no awkward who goes first. And let's just go around and, and everybody introduce themselves, uh, members of the, the committee. So this is a brand new committee, the Sherwood Traffic Safety Committee. And so we want to give everybody a chance to get to know one another. And so please just uh, tell us your name, what caused you to be interested in the traffic safety committee and anything in particular that uh, motivates you related to traffic safety. So Ruth, uh, do you prefer Ruth or Ruth Ann? Remind me. Um, let's go with Ruth Ann. I'm okay, I'm okay with either. Let's go All with right. Ruth Ann. So Ruth Ann, why don't you start for us, please? Well, um, I just uh, heard by word of mouth the committee was forming um, and decided that this might be a good place for me to uh, participate in uh, the city and, and make a contribution. Um, certainly, um, I, I see things that, that could be a little safer now and then. Um, uh, I worry about some of the traffic circles and I worry about what's going to happen over at um, the high school, um, and there are a lot of people that drive too fast through neighborhoods. Okay, very good. It's great to have you. Thank uh, next, you. Yeah, next, and I'm just going through my list, uh, which is alphabetical. So, Patty, why don't you go next, please? Yeah, uh, my name is Patty Spring, and I'm a resident here in Sherwood and I love our little community and I thought uh, what better opportunity than to get involved and be on the traffic safety community and try to promote an overall sense of well-being in our community with all the growth and new adventures that the city is taking on. So I thought it would be a fantastic opportunity to give back to the community and to just get involved. Why not? Okay, thank you. Jason, why don't you go next? Okay, so I um, have lived in Sherwood for about 14 years and um, got a bunch of little kids. And uh, I'm a, a civil engineer by profession, so traffic and um, that sort of stuff is kind of up my alley and, and I have an interest in it uh, professionally but also personally and um, the opportunity to uh, serve the, the community in this capacity 
sounded interesting to me. Um, a good opportunity, so that's why I'm here. Outstanding, thank you. <coughs> Tiffany, you're next. Um, I have lived in Sherwood for about 14, going on 15 years. Um, I have two kids in elementary school, um, and that's really what got me wanting to be involved in the Traffic Safety Committee, because um, I am concerned about the um, amount of traffic in Sherwood, especially with the high school opening up. So just thought it would be a good opportunity and a um, good learning experience. Great, thanks. Mike Smith. Hi, everybody. I've been a Sherwood resident for about 15 years. I'm a newbie on the uh, advisory board, so kind of raised my hand on this. Uh, I'm interested in traffic safety. Um, primarily, what got me going was one of our uh, neighbor's kids almost got hit by a car in our neighborhood, so that kind of took the interest. Very good, thank you. And last, but certainly not least, Chris West. Thanks, Chief. Um, I, my name is Chris West. I've been in Sherwood for 20 years. Um, both my kids have gone through the Sherwood school system and are graduated. Um, I have a granddaughter that lives with us. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm still connected that way with kids. Um, I'm one of the initial members of the police advisory board, which has been in going for five years chief is that about right sounds about right yeah and uh i've been vocal about uh getting this committee together and so i got put on it <laughs> 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 along with mike <laughs> Okay, so as they indicated, Mike and Chris are uh, both members of the Police Advisory Board, and the way the, the structure of the Traffic Safety Committee is set up is it's an offshoot, if you will. Uh, if you wanted to use the word subcommittee, you could, but it's, it's not really accurate because the Traffic Safety Committee is its own standing uh, board and commission, just like any of the others, but it is certainly very related to uh, the police advisory board. Uh, and so as a result of that, the committee was set up with two members from the police advisory board. <clears throat> they will serve one year terms and then the police advisory board uh, will determine whether they will, you know, they'll stay another term or there'll be different people that, that uh, get on, uh, that serve on the traffic safety committee. So that, that their terms are a little bit different um, than the other five of you uh, who are, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but the typical term for a board and commission is three years. And so that's um, generally how that works. So that's how their terms on the police advisory board roll. So this is an additional function that they're uh, serving. So very good. One of the first things we need to accomplish uh, as a new board is to select a chair and a vice chair. And the <clears throat> there's really no criteria for that other than somebody who is interested in, a couple people who are interested in doing that. There's not really any extra work involved. The primary role of the chair would be to coordinate with uh, the staff liaison, which initially will be me, but eventually will likely be Captain John Carlson. You'll meet him in a second. Uh, but it will be to coordinate with staff to put the agenda together and run the meetings. And there's really, that's all there is to it. The role of the vice chair, of course, is to serve in the absence of the chair. So if the chair is not able to make a meeting then the vice chair would run that meeting in their place. And what we do is we, we actually coordinate with both the chair and the vice chair, uh, help them get the agenda set, they approve the agenda, and then we go from there. So like I said, it's not a huge lift, uh, but you will need to, you know, whoever serves in that role will need to be willing to run the meetings. 
and talk more uh, than anybody else, perhaps. So, uh, so I'll stop there. If there's any questions about the chair or vice chair, I can certainly answer them. Otherwise, um, we can take nominations, suggestions. Oh, and it's a one one year. So the chair and the vice chair are elected every July. So you would only be committing to, uh, well, initially you'd be committing to about a month and a half, but I'm assuming in, in July the, you would be ratified again or whatever the board wanted to do. But uh, otherwise you're committing to a, a one year period. So with, the, with that, are there any questions or suggestions or nominations? Who wants to do it? Well, I know that I know that Chris really kind of fought for this, so I would nominate Chris. I'll get you, Mike. <laughs> I nominate Jason. I'm I'm sorry. Somebody else said something. Uh, yeah, I said I'll, I'll nominate Jason. <laughs> I withdraw. <laughs> oh, man. I've been to this rodeo before, Jason. Uh, Jason, are you uh, willing? If nobody else steps up and wants to. <laughs> I move that the nominations be closed, Chief. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> Is there uh, so I, uh, I figured I'd have to remind Chris at some point or another he wasn't running this meeting, but no. Um, <laughs> is there is there anybody else? And don't be shy. If, if you're interested in doing that, let us know. Like I said, it's not a long-term commitment, and we do need a vice chair. So, I'm not super interested in doing it. If someone else has an interest in it, that'd be cool. But I will if if that's it. If nobody else wants to. Go for it, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Jason. <laughs> okay, so uh, just to, to make it official for the record, uh, and in, instead of everybody saying aye, uh, if those in, in favor of Jason serving as chair, just give a thumbs up so Angie can recognize you in the minutes. Chief, I don't think everybody is actually seen, so I don't know that that will work for Angie. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Have to be speaking. <laughs> yeah, Angie, Angie, why don't you just go through the list and ask an individual. And just ask each individual? Yeah, for an I. Okay. Ruth Ann? I. Patty? Aye. Tiffany? Aye. All right. And Jason? Yes, he already agreed, right? Sure. <laughs> and then did you already have Mike and Chris? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I wasn't sure if they were part of that. So, um, yes. Mike? Aye. And Chris? Hi. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Yeah. So just to clarify, um, ev everybody on the committee now is a full voting member of the committee. There's the only difference with the police advisory board members are there, there potentially would be their term that they would serve. So, uh, okay. We need a, you need a vice chair. I nominate Patty. I second that. <laughs> Patty, are you willing? Oh, sure. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not gonna, probably not going to hear any objections, so maybe we should just go to the vote quickly and we'll be done with this. Oh. Angie, go ahead, please. All right. Ruth Ann? Aye. Jason? Aye. Tiffany? Aye. Mike? Aye. And Chris? Aye. All right. Unanimous. 
Very good. So, uh, Jason, do you have the agenda in front of you? I don't, but I can find it in my email real quick. So while you're doing that, I will cover the next point. Um, the next thing we need to do is select your formal meeting dates. I can tell you that the best night of the week is Thursday, just based on other boards and commissions that are occurring on other weeknights. And so that would mean the first, second, or first, or excuse me, fourth Thursdays of the month, because the third Thursdays are the police advisory board meetings. Mm -hmm. So is uh, anybody want to speak up with one of those better than the other? I'm Did you say first and fourth? First, second, or fourth? Ah. I go for the fourth. Okay, thank you, Ruth Ann. Is there anybody that the fourth Thursday of every month would not work? I like that too, it gives us a week separation from police advisory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, not hearing any objections, we will set the next meeting uh, and, and all future meetings on the fourth Thursday of every month. Thank you all for that. Jason, are you ready to take over? And will they all be at 6 p.m., Chief? Oh, great question. Uh, they can be no earlier than, well, they could be earlier, I suppose. They could be at 5 or 6 or 7. Generally, people aren't ready at 5 o'clock, but. My gut right now is 6 because we don't know how much we're going to be dealing with and hopefully we can cut it off at two hours and not three hours. Joe, you're laughing. That's not fair. Not fair. <laughs> hopefully okay. three hour meetings to start. So let me ask, does anybody, does six o'clock not work for anybody? It works fine for me. Okay. Good for me. Okay. Very good, thank you. So we will be six o'clock on the fourth Thursday of every month. Hey Chief, can I ask a question? You're my boss, you can always ask a question. It may be premature, but location once COVID is done and we don't have to do virtual meetings, were you planning on using the community room at the PD for your meetings? Or yes. this location? Okay. Yeah. Yep, we'll meet at the police department. Okay, so we've got, we're ready to move on to item number six. Jason, are you ready? Sure. So the review right. of municipal code. Okay, so I emailed a bunch of homework out to everybody. I hope you had a chance to review it. And one of the first items that I wanted to go over with you tonight is the municipal code. And I highlighted the pertinent sections. And so you'll notice on the first, I'm not going to read this word for word, but on the first, let's see, four about four and a half pages is all the general code language that deals with all boards and commissions. So the first four and a half pages uh, applies to the traffic safety committee. So it talks about uh, all kinds of things, um, establishment, role and authority, duties and responsibilities, officers, uh, so we've gotten that taken care of, the meetings, rules of procedures. <clears throat> and I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to go through all of this because the important stuff we will talk about specifically on the agenda. A council liaison, um, 
the council decided that they didn't need a full-time liaison to the traffic safety committee because they have one to the police advisory board. So that's a little bit different for us. But that's not to suggest that a city councilor may not join our meetings at any time. Um, so yeah, is there any questions about any of any of that municipal code? Like I said, I I hope you had a chance to review it. The that general part, and then near the end of that document is the section. I apologize, I don't know what page it is, but it's this, there's a section specifically to the Traffic Safety Committee. And that's important because that gives you your, you know, your charge, your marching orders, obviously. It's page eight and nine. Thank you. Yeah. So in particular, uh, just so everybody knows, the purpose of the Traffic Safety Committee is to promote traffic safety through investigation, study, and analysis of traffic safety programs, educating the community regarding traffic safety, reviewing and responding to traffic safety complaints, and advising the city council and city manager on traffic safety related issues. So I have a question, Chief. Yes. So when we come to conclusions and you know establish different recommendations if we don't have a liaison who do we go to you yes so okay. the very simple process is the items will come to you all mm -hmm. you will review the the complaints the concerns whatever the case may be i would suggest in most circumstances you're going to ask staff for more data you okay. may want traffic counts you may want speed measures you may want any number of different things and then you'll get that data from staff and then make an analysis of the issue um, and discuss it, get you know continued input from staff, apply the, the knowledge and the education that, that will start tonight, and then make a recommendation. And the recommendation could be as simple as, we don't feel like anything needs to happen but more enforcement. Okay. And so that recommendation would come to the police department. That would be the end of it. It would be very simple. The recommendation could be as complex as we feel there needs to be some kind of an engineering change made. Something physical needs to happen at this, you know, particular roadway or whatever, and it involves cost. Um, th that would then take two different directions. It would go to staff and get to the city manager. At the same time, the police advisory board could carry that along with this committee uh, to city council and make that recommendation to city council if it rose to the level of a policy decision or some kind of a significant budgetary item that wasn't an expenditure that wasn't in the budget and needed to be special funds or something like that. So. I don't anticipate that to be the course of action very often, but potentially be, that could happen because you do provide, could provide input to city council. Okay, so what happens if there's already, for example, an ordinance in place regarding you know, safety? For example, the 18 wheeler trucks when they utilize their Jake brakes coming into town and we receive a handful of complaints and we, you know, requesting extra enforcement or what have you, or, or if they want to change an ordinance, how does that work? Do we just continue to come to you until there's a liaison if they're ever? So you would, you would analyze and investigate the concern, and then you would have to determine, does, does there need to be a change in law? Okay. And obviously we have control over the municipal code, not state law. That would, sure. you know, I'm just because some people get pretty yeah yeah pretty fired up and so right. I just I, I want to so, know I, who who do I go to <laughs> right so as a as a board you would if you felt like yeah the code needs to be changed then staff would carry that forward okay and we would prepare the work you at some point would would make your case to the city council because they're the ones that establish and and modify city code municipal code. 
if you felt like the municipal code was fine, but it just needed to be enforced, then you'd simply go to police, you know, report to the police staff and say, uh, we need more enforcement up here on this code and, and we'd make it happen. Cool. Okay. I just, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yep. I had a couple questions. Well, you kind of talked a little bit about the, the complaint process. Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Or maybe it hasn't really been established what that will look like. Um, but will, will the traffic safety committee, will this group be the first stop for someone with a complaint? Um, or will there be uh, city staff that that receive the complaints and maybe do some upfront investigation or, or data gathering and come to the to this group with the complaint plus a little bit of <clears throat> data or information? So the, the best answer to that, Jason, is all the above. So one of the things that we're going to start tonight is that process. Okay, so there will be a process that's established for the complaints to come in and it's not going to be complicated, but you all need to sign off on it. It needs to be something that works for you and not dictated to you. We're obviously going to give you a lot of guidance and input and suggestion, but it needs to be your process because you're the community, right? That's why this group was formed because, because you represent the community on these matters. <laughs> Um, what what isn't going to happen is is for example the police department is not going to stop taking requests for extra patrols. So if somebody calls and says there's people speeding through our neighborhood, can you put up some do some extra patrol? We're not going to say oh sorry you need to call the traffic safety committee. Okay, mm -hmm. but if they call and they say we have a problem, there is a speeding issue in our neighborhood. This is a chronic issue. Uh, that would be something that we might forward because you all may look at it and, and review the data and decide that, yeah, there is a bigger issue here that we can't enforce our way out of. And maybe we need to put up more signs, look at some kind of traffic calming or whatever the case may be, right? Uh, so on any on any complaint or issue that comes in that clearly needs to come to this traffic safety committee, the, you know, a, re a request for some physical change, a request for additional signage, something like that, staff will direct the person to the, the proper form. Uh, they can email them the form, direct them to the website where the form's at, and we're going to request that the citizens complete the form and submit them, and staff will gather those forms, and then they'll go to the traffic safety committee. And in some situations, there could be some, some legwork that's done by staff, but generally I would think that um, what's probably gonna happen is that we're gonna wait until you guys have a chance to review the forms, take a look at them, and tell us what kind of data you want so that we don't spend three hours getting something that is of no use to you. Okay, so here's why this is so important is because one of the things, the pieces that's been missing is a formal process to handle these complaints. So we want to establish a formal process and it's critically important that we track the complaints. So this gives us an opportunity and a method to know, hey, last year we took in 42 complaints and uh, so far this year we're at 41, you know, or whatever the case may be. And so it just provides important documentation. So that's why that's such an important piece uh, to, to staff. And, and mm -hmm. frankly, we're looking forward to getting this, um, you know, this program up and running and the process running. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. So Chief, can I mention a few things before you get too deep or into Julia's presentation from my perspective? and where the value uh, of this can, committee is going to really, I think, shine. Can I very respectfully and politely, I've got a spot for you, for you okay. and everybody else on the agenda. Will that work or do you need that to- That works, I just didn't okay. know. I just, okay. I, because a lot of these things land on my desk. Yep. Um, and our process now is not the most effective process. I, I'm mm -hmm. really excited about this committee and getting <laughs> citizen input that right now we don't get. 
Um, but I'll hold off until the appropriate time. Okay. Any other questions on municipal code? We got a little bit beyond that, which is fine. So I wanna review the terms of office really quick, just so everybody knows. Uh, by code, the, the terms um, all expire. So we clarified all boards and commission terms expire on June 30th of any given year, okay? So um, with the exception of this year for you guys, cause it's a brand new uh, board and commission, but so next year on June 30th is when the expiration start. The code also requires that the terms be staggered so that we're not replacing everybody at once. Okay, and so um, just in purely alphabetical order, um, so Tony, his term will expire next June. So he will in essence get shorted, but you can reapply. So if you don't get your full three years, you simply reapply, you can get put back on the, on the board. Um, and then you'll have, you know, uh, three years until your next expiration. Uh, Ruth Ann, your first expiration will be in 2022. So you'll lose one year, but again, if you want to, you can, you can reapply. And then uh, Patty, uh, just because where you fell in the alphabet, you'll get a full three years on your initial term. And then we start over again in 21 with Jason and then 22 with Tiffany. So uh, again, as a reminder, Mike and Chris, as members of the police advisory board, they're, they're only gonna serve a one year term and they may be replaced, they may not. That's up to the board if there's, they want other folks to, to serve. So any questions about the terms, you can certainly decide that you've had enough and you can resign at any point. Hopefully nobody does that. We'll try to keep you happy. Um, but, uh, and there's no limit on reapplying uh, necessarily either. So you can, you can kind of stay on as long as you're enjoying it, uh, meeting the requirements and there's not a line of other people. What might happen is council, there's a bunch of other people after seven years, you know, the council may say, uh, oh, let's let somebody, somebody else have a shot, but I've got so, a long time before we worry about that. I have a question chief. So if neighbors, uh, ask or what have you with all the different road improvements happening, especially over the next couple of years um, about being on the committee, who should I send them to then? Or just send them to the website or you how, mean how will we funnel that? People who have interest moving forward. And joining the committee? Yeah, as, as we yeah, have. Yeah, so uh, I, would, I would direct them to the website. And okay. if, if you're aware that there's a vacancy on the committee, you can certainly tell them, hey, we have a vacancy and so apply, or you okay. can tell them, well, we don't have any vacancies currently, but the website and social media is where they would most likely see the posting about any vacancies. Okay. So we're limited to the numbers we have right now so that we couldn't add anybody else unless somebody left. Okay. Thank you. Yep, any other questions on that? Okay, the other item is probably one of the most important things um, for any new member to a board and commission to, to learn. And that's, this is a, just a quick lesson on public records and public meetings law. As, as members of a, an official board or commission for the city of Sherwood, you are all considered public officials now. And that, that doesn't really mean anything other than there's a set of rules you need to be aware of. <clears throat> so first of all, you only have authority as a part of the traffic safety committee, right? So you cannot speak or act uh, as a member of the traffic safety committee unless you have the authority of the committee. So in other words, let's say a neighbor comes up to you and says, you know what, we need a stop sign here at this street and you say, well, yeah, you're right. And I'm on the traffic safety committee, so we'll get that done. Yes. You can't do that, right? So that's the, the simple example. You can't speak on behalf of the committee unless you're authorized or appointed to do so. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. 
Now, you, you do not lose your role as a private citizen, okay? Uh, you are still a private citizen. You can say what you want as, you know, private citizen Jason Wirtz, this is my own opinion. You just can't mix the roles, okay? So, so I don't want you to think that you give anything up, but you just need to be very aware of the role and, and understand that you, you know, you keep a separation between them. Um, everything that you all do as a part of the Traffic Safety Committee is a matter of public business. Every meeting is open to the public. Uh, every work product that you produce or that we as staff produce on your behalf is a public record. None of that stuff, there's no secrets when you're doing the, the people's business, right? And I assume that everybody understands that because that's how you would want it as a, as a citizen member or as a member of the public as well. So uh, that becomes important because uh, people have gotten in trouble before about you know, you joke about passing notes in class, but those kinds of things uh, can get folks sideways sometimes. So you just need to be aware that everything that is said and done um, becomes a matter of public business. Uh, you can't get together as a committee um, and have a quorum unless it's in an official meeting. Now, two of you can get together and chat. You just can't make deals and you just can't, um, you know, plan and scheme, but you can certainly get together socially and, and you know, do all that. But but um, you can't, so a quorum, it would be four. So four of you can't get together uh, and start talking about business away from a meeting, okay? And in like manner, you cannot have email conversations. So for example, some of you emailed me questions about the time of the meeting or whatever, and you replied all. So moving forward, I would ask you not to do that anymore because then what happens is somebody else replies and says, oh, well, I thought this, and then somebody else replied. Now you're holding a meeting via email that the public is not invited to, and we're all in trouble. <laughs> so... So we, this is a, a lesson that we continue to remind the police advisory board and all of our boards and commissions about. So let staff do the email work for you. And what I mean by that is if you have something as chair, Jason, and you say, hey, I, I would like the committee to have this article I saw that's very informative. Give it to me. We'll send it out to the full committee. That way, you don't run the risk of somebody responding back, and now all of a sudden we've conducted a meeting. If any of you as committee members have a question about something, uh, please ask the question to staff only. That way we're not generating a meeting, and then I can share or staff can share the information to everybody at once one way, and that keeps us out of trouble. So does that, does that make sense? Is there any questions about that? Oftentimes that email piece can be the trickiest. So just and one clarify. reminder, one reminder, sometimes, especially a new committee or folks that aren't used to that, those rules will, will forget and they'll do a reply all and a staff person may gently remind you not to do that. It, don't take it personal. We're trying to keep things keep you guys out of trouble. It happens sometimes even with my counsel, sometimes they'll do a reply all and either myself or the city attorney will remind them, please don't do that because we don't want to get into uh, an issue related to uh, public meetings law. So. You referred to questions going to staff. Right now, that is just you, Jeff, or will and will that then become? I forget. You said Captain. Someone will take that role. Is it that's that's who you mean by staff? The staff person on the committee? Yes. So we will after this meeting, we will clarify that with you because one thing that's going to be different about this committee from most, I think, all of the other boards and commissions is you're going to have multiple staff liaisons. Because traffic, most of what you're going to be dealing with crosses several departments, police, engineering, 
planning, who knows? So, so we will clarify that with you. But in the meantime, between now and until you hear further, please utilize myself and Angie. You'll notice when I send stuff out, I will copy Angie because at, at this point, she is the one that's taking the notes and preparing the meeting minutes. So it's important she knows what's going on. Um, she also keeps us in the police department level-headed and on track. So, um, so right now, just utilize us as your as your key staff, and and then we'll, like I said, that may change. We'll clarify that down the road. Chief, I have a, a question slash comment. I imagine this committee, once um, people know that they are on the committee, they may get unsolicited emails from the public. Um, can you advise them on what to do with those and maintain proper records and meeting law stuff? Yes, good point, Julia, thank you. So I'll use um, the example I used before. A neighbor comes up to you and says, you know what, we really need to have a stop sign right here. Uh, uh, you're on the traffic safety committee, you need to take care of that. What I would advise and ask is that you very nicely refer them to the form on the website, or I suppose you could hand them the form if you wanted to and say, hey, you know what, we're interested in knowing what about this please fill this form out and submit it so the committee can address it, right? Mm. Um, any questions, they may just ask you a question, as Julia said. And if you don't have an answer, you can certainly answer the question. You just can't speak on behalf of the committee. You know, you can say, well, I think it's this, but if, if you want me to check, I'll, I'll take it back to the committee and we'll get, you know, uh, or you can forward it to staff and say, you know what, somebody just asked me this question and I really don't know what the right answer is. Uh, and then we can send the answer to everybody. So that will alleviate that problem. So including the questioner or just to the committee? You said oh, the answer so, to everybody. So let's say, Ruth Ann, that, the, that you forward the question to staff. I got this question. I didn't know how to answer it. Could you, can you give us, you know, can you advise? I'm going to reply to the entire committee and say, uh, committee, uh, Ruth Ann got this question. Uh, here's the answer in case any of the rest of you get the question. Or it could be a matter of something that, that like I said, we would need to be forwarded to the committee at the next meeting. But if it's a simple question to answer, I'm going to give, I'm going to answer your question, but everybody's going to get the answer. Just for the benefit of all committee members, because like I said, somebody may ask them two days later. And it would be okay for the individual committee members then to take that answer back to the citizen questioner. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep, as a, it would. As a clarifier for that, um, my understanding is that if we, that, that our e email communications in relation to the, this traffic safety committee are public record. So if we have conversations over email, even if we're doing it the way you just described, those email records are public record. Correct. So it's just something to be aware of, I think. Yes. And... That actually reminds me of something else. Um, this is not a requirement. It is a suggestion. We make the same suggestion to our police advisory board members. Um, you might think about getting a separate email just for traffic safety committee business. That was my next and this, question. Yeah. yeah well, and, and the reason is you could just do Jason Sherwood TSC at gmail.com, right? It doesn't have to be complicated. And the reason is that way we get that email, all the business of the traffic safety committee is done on that email. And so if there's a public records request that comes in, your personal email account is left out of it, right? So just yeah. a suggestion, most people have followed that suggestion. Um, 
Maybe not everybody, but I think most people from the police advisory board, um, obviously I can't speak to other boards and commissions, but have done that. So it just makes it a little bit cleaner for, for you as a public official. Anything else on that? And as Joe said, any you know snafus on this, which are expected by the way, we'll just give you a gentle reminder. And so don't feel bad, it's gonna happen. It, it just it just is. So uh, we will continue to learn and grow uh, on that as a committee. So uh, one of the question, um, part of that agenda item was meeting law. And I know you talked about quorum, but are there, uh, as far as like running the meeting, is that the, you know, Robert's rule of order or that stuff is, is guidance, not, not, I mean, I guess my question is how strictly are we following that with this committee? So um, on the, that's spelled out in, in the section meetings, rules of procedures in the municipal code. So I would encourage you to refer, refer, refer to that, excuse me. And it says rules of procedure, Robert's rules of order shall serve as a guideline for the conduct of citizen board and commission meetings. Um, so that's really gonna be up to the committee how stringent they wanna be generally those exist to, to ensure some decorum so people aren't talking over one another, but um, rarely in boards and commissions do we see that as an issue. So it just, like it, like it says, it serves as a guideline. So if you, Jason, as chair, feel like, oh, was I supposed to say the magic word? Don't worry about that kind of stuff. Um, it's just about making sure that Everybody gets a chance to speak. Everybody gets a chance to be heard. Everybody gets a chance to vote yay or nay and uh, have, have their vote count. So that's, that's really the gist of it. How has the public involvement been at the police advisory board? Is there, is there a decent attendance each time people come in with issues and, or is it pretty quiet? It's pretty quiet. We have consistent attendance of one lady at just about every meeting. She's one of our police department volunteers and she enjoys coming to the meetings. And outside of that, we rarely have anybody, anybody else that visits us. Okay. Now, I don't expect the same for this committee because as people submit complaints or whatever to be addressed, um, I would kind of expect that they may show up to the meetings to, to see what you all have to say about their, their idea. Um, and the, uh, citizen comments are allowed. Uh, council's wish is that at every board and commission meeting, we give citizens an opportunity to be heard. They get four minutes. And um, so they generally don't talk about, we don't have them talk about things on the agenda. So it's gonna be kind of weird. People aren't gonna be able to show up and argue their point to you guys necessarily. But again, it's, it's not something that happens very much. And so at least at the police advisory board level, it's, it's pretty lax and you know, it's not, not a big deal, but we'll have to see how it works for our committee. Cause like I said, I expect we may have some people show up passionate about what they submitted and so. I have a question, Chief. So as folks submit uh, complaints to staff or what have you, and then they make way to us and we go through them and make decisions, should we put those individual complaints on the agenda just in case somebody does show up to let them know that we are in fact working through it as a committee? outside of just emailing and that sort of thing? Yes, I think that would be, that was certainly my intent or my idea was that, um, you know, on any given meeting, if, if we decide, okay, there's, you know, depending on how many issues we have to wrestle with. And unfortunately I've, I've already got a folder full of things that, that 
that when you guys are ready, we'll start addressing. But if we figure three or four or five or six per meeting, then then yeah, we'll list those on the agenda so folks have some idea. Another important part of this, when the committee was was being put together, one of the things that council really liked was the way we structured the fact that this committee would receive input from and then report back to community members that voice concerns. Right. Now that'll be staff's job, right? Okay. So staff will carry the message to the person that submitted it. Um, but certainly they, like I said, they could come to the meetings as well. So that's an important part. So their ability to know that you're talking about their issue and come yeah. and listen, mm -hmm. I think is gonna be very important. Okay. Again, as, as, as Joe indicated, <clears throat> probably the key foundational component of, of this committee existing is the fact that, that we recognize we've got to have community input on these traffic related issues. We can't make decisions in a vacuum. We've got to have a process. We've got to have this set up. And so that's that's why we're, we are where we're at today. So certainly we're going to involve the community as much as possible. Uh, certainly we're gonna count on you to uh, inform uh, when appropriate and educate when appropriate. And um, we'll talk more about that uh, in the future, but. So when people come to us, for example, and, and they make the complaint and what have you, they, they will feel validated and staff will follow up with them. Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else on that? That was kind of the public records and a little bit other stuff, little process stuff. So hearing none, um, I will move into kind of the business moving forward. And so the first thing I want you to do is get to meet uh, the folks that you may be seeing at these monthly meetings. And I'm going to introduce one that um, was not able to join us, but uh, we have a representative from Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue. Uh, she is a deputy fire marshal. Her name is Kate Stoller. She may be joining us on some meetings. Um, traffic calming and traffic safety is obviously an important component and a, an important topic to our partners at TVFNR. And so um, we've got them included in this process. So she's very likely watching on YouTube right now. We had some connection issues that we'll, we'll get figured out. But, and then with that, I will just, um, we'll start at the top. That's you, Joe. Oh, thank You're you. You're at the top. So, thank I you. thought it was Angie. Yeah, it is Angie. Well, <laughs> it is. Let's, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, thank you, Chief. Um, and first and foremost, I, I will try to be short, but I wanna thank all of you for volunteering to um, be citizens on a brand new committee. Um, I think as I'm listening to the questions and thinking through things, this is largely gonna be a work in progress. We do not have like, this is how we do everything to involve a traffic safety committee. So you guys, as kind of the, the first members of this committee are gonna be really helpful with ideas and suggestions and how we can include the public in our decision-making. Um, and that's pretty exciting actually. Um, this committee has been talked about internally and with council for a number of years. I'm really excited that it's finally up and running. I'm sorry we're meeting this way due to COVID. Um, the council's very excited that you're uh, finally up and running. And one of the reasons, and I think just from listening to why you got on this committee is I've been city manager here, um, it'll be eight years in June next month. And one of the things that I have seen in my tenure here is a ever increasing number of complaints, concerns, um, feedback. When I hear from citizens in town, um, traffic safety, neighborhood safety, um, people speeding through neighborhoods, school safety, the lack of traffic calming, all of those things are increasing in terms of the, the, the number of, of um, 
things that are landing on my desk and with uh, other members of our team. It's a quality of life issue for this community. And I'd love to say that there are easy answers and simple answers, but they're not. Um, and I think it's only going to get worse. Um, one of you mentioned, maybe it was Patty, about, you know, there's some major road construction on the horizon. Tualatin and Sherwood Road and Roy Rogers Roads are going to be um, widened over the next four plus years. That unfortunately is going to probably force more traffic into neighborhoods as people try to get away from that congestion and that traffic and try to get in and around Sherwood. That's going to trickle into neighborhoods. We're seeing that already. Um, we're seeing traffic levels on neighborhoods that were not designed for those levels. And of course, people are trying to get home at rush hour and they're speeding. And um, there are kids in those neighborhoods. So it's a real livability issue in this community. And um, I don't think it's going to go away. I think it's going to get more and more complex. So we need citizen input. Um, there's a lot of technical information that gets looked at by the city engineer and the, and the staff here and from police. But we have lacked the voice of the citizen, the average citizen. Um, so I really am excited about this as we move forward. And it will morph over time um, and change over time. I think Chris can tell you probably from being on the police advisory board from the inception that that committee has changed over time as well. The other thing I would suggest is, um, and maybe Chief has suggested this already, um, I hate recreating wheels. There are other communities in our region that have history and traffic safety committees and examples of how they do things. If you haven't had the chance, go check out their agendas. How do they operate? What kind of materials do they do? What is their role? Um, uh, Tualatin, West Lynn, Newburgh, all of our surrounding neighborhoods all have committees like this that are slightly different. And I think you can always pick up good ideas and, and suggestions from how other communities are addressing these. So um, you could probably watch their meetings on YouTube or on public access and find out how they operate. So I encourage you to do that. Um, I think uh, Chief mentioned there's a backlog of things just because we get consistent um, complaints about issues and uh, we will develop procedures and how to incorporate you and your voice and to allow citizens to, to weigh in and help us make decisions. The other thing that will be frustrating for you probably is we don't have enough resources to solve everything financially. So my proposed budget is coming out uh, probably tomorrow or Monday, and I've allocated $100,000 to start for projects that may come out of recommendations from this committee. Um, you'll learn from, from our city engineer that 100000 Sounds like a lot of money, but it really is not. So as I look out over the future, if we're successful, um, finding more resources to allocate to traffic safety and traffic calming is something we're probably going to have to do. Um, but we had to start somewhere in terms of a budget item. Um, I think I'll stop there. Uh, I'm just excited, unless you have specific questions for me. I know Julia has, and her team has a lot of information yet to share, but if you have a specific question for me, I'd love to hear it. Otherwise, we can continue, Chief. I have a question. Sure. Um, Joe, is it possible, not immediately out the gate, however, over time to possibly streamline the process to bring the complaints to staff? Um, to keep the staff involved, but perhaps just have one individual instead of, a, you know, multiple to save on budget because hourly and what have you that goes into that. Is that something that we could somehow look into as we progress? The, the short answer is yes, definitely. Whatever systems we want to make to improve the process and to get citizen input and, and access, it should be as efficient and easy as possible. And that's why I'm saying... Let's look at how other cities that have this program up and running, how they're doing things effectively and, and steal and borrow those ideas right. rather than trying to figure it out on our own. Right. We're not an island unto ourselves. No, no. There's some uh, quite a few innovative ideas that surround us within seven miles. 
Correct. So Correct. yeah, thank you. That's so great... let me let me add to that because I may have not been clear enough earlier, but uh, the lead uh, department right now, in terms of funneling things through, is going to be the police department. <clears throat> So that will be us that gathers those documents. So the email, uh, once the process is posted and up and running, the email uh, and the channels will all lead to us. So it won't, they won't end up at multiple different staff members. Okay. However, multiple different staff members may direct and should direct people to the forms. And then on the form, it'll say, submit here, mail here, turn in here, whatever, and that will all be police department. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <Yeah. laughs> okay, one other thing before we move on, I just caught up with an email real quick. Tony Bevel, uh, everybody wave hi to Tony. He hi, is Tony. following us Tony. <laughs> on YouTube tonight. We had some connectivity issues, but he's he just emailed me to tell me he's on YouTube. So thanks, Tony, for jumping on that. We'll get that figured out. Okay, um, Julia, why don't you go next? Uh, thank you and um, welcome to the committee. I too am very excited that this committee is formed. I am Julia Hyduke. I'm the Community Development Director at the City of Sherwood. Uh, I manage um, planning, building, engineering, economic development, and code compliance. Um, Building and economic development don't really have a lot to do with traffic calming, but the other three often do. Um, and Bob is going to be introduced here in a second, and he gets the brunt of a lot of um, complaints. Um, and we haven't always had a really clear process of, of who is doing what. Um, under, under my department, um, we also take the lead on the capital improvement program, which is essentially the budgeting of um, infrastructure projects. Um, and a lot of some of the traffic calming things are going to be fairly um, inexpensive, um, but some some may be quite expensive. And one of the things that um, I think Joe was was kind of alluding to, he's gotten a lot of complaints, but it's also a lot of times the squeaky wheel, you know, um, issues where you've got you know ten people from a neighborhood coming complaining about something that maybe really technically isn't really that big of an issue. Um, and then one person complaining about something that technically really is a huge issue um, and having a committee to help um, advise, prioritize, um, and, and listen really is, is going to really help a lot in that regard. Um, the other thing that I'm excited about in addition to kind of just helping guide where we spend money and how we um, address these issues is, um, and this is going to be probably longer term than, than right away because you've got to sounds like a lot of things on your plate already. But I see over time this committee providing um, advice and guidance on development code. And maybe if we can get input from this committee in, in the development code stage, we'll be able to put things in place as development is occurring that will minimize um, these impacts and complaints. And I think as you guys um, tackle um, issues over the next you know months to year or so, I think you'll gain a lot of um, insight on kind of things that maybe we can be looking at changing um, over time to to help ensure that neighborhoods are developing in a way that is all sort of integrating traffic calming pro measures. So excited that you guys are here. And I don't know that you'll see me um, every meeting, but I would definitely wanted to be at this meeting to, to meet you and to introduce myself. Um, so welcome. <laughs> and Jeff, just... Uh, one thing that Julia mentioned, you'll probably see me early on at a lot of your meetings just to kind of stay on top of how things are going and answer questions. And and I'll hear from uh, my collective bosses. The council will be wondering, hey, how the, how's the new committee going? So you'll probably see me early on, um, and then I will kind of drift away and let staff um, like Bob and, and uh, Captain Carlson primarily uh, be the staff person. So... Okay, thanks, Julia. Uh, Bob Galati, why don't you go next, sir? Hi, I'm Bob Galati. I'm the city engineer for the city of Sherwood. I've been here 13 years, uh, practicing engineering 25, 30 years. Um, I manage the engineering group, and I'm the technical uh, resource 
uh, for the city and this group of individuals who are going to take care of the uh, the traffic safety control of the city. Um, I look forward to it. Um, I work with the, the uh, police department pretty heavily uh, regarding the complaints that come in. Um, usually there's there's two sides to everything. And 